Alright, bet. There we go. Five, four, three, two. What up, what up, what up? It's your boy True Hill Ness back with another episode of Mess XT starring me. Uh, this is actually a special edition of Mess XT where I'm reviewing the TakeOver, uh, I'm sorry, the NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2 special. And, you know, let's get right into it. The show overall was a very good show. I um, probably don't have too much bad to say about it, but that might change as I'm going through the show. So, you know, who knows? Right now, I don't have anything bad to say, but that's because I'm still off of, you know, just looking over the show as it was. But, again, that might change as I'm breaking down some of these matches and saying how I feel about things. So, let's get right into it. Uh, the first match on the card, it was... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Before we even get into that, I'm not really an NXT UK watcher. Um, and by not really, I mean I don't watch this shit at all. Uh, I am familiar with uh, the major names from NXT UK, such as, you know, the members of Mustache Mountain, um, some members of Imperium, you know, like Tony Storm, Piper Niven, um, some of the guys in like the tag matches, like the ladder match. So I'm not really a uh, NXT UK aficionado. So some of my comments might come off as ignorant, and not ignorant in an asshole way. I mean ignorant in a way of I'm not really familiar with the show and some of the talent on there. So just don't take it to heart. Don't get into your fucking feelings and feel a way that I might be talking about one of your favorites. Relax, you know, leave some thoughts in the comments, and enlighten me. After this show, I think I might start watch. well, it was a takeover, so I don't think I'm going to, like, I'll, I, I watch the takeovers, but I'm not going to be, like, checking out the weekly show like that. But who knows, it might change. But again, some of my comments might come off as, I don't know, and I'm giving that warning right now. So, if any of you idiots that watch this shit and be like, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about, I fucking said that, so I don't need that to be repeated. Okay? So anyway, back into breaking down these matches. First match on the card, it was Trent Seven versus Eddie Dennis. Um, again, I'm familiar with Trent Seven. I'm not too familiar with uh, Eddie Dennis. Um, the match started off with uh, Trent Seven, you know, Trent Seven coming off with the, the offense, you know, going to the match looking good, coming out strong. Um... One of the spots that I like from Trent Seven was he did a snap German suplex, you know, um, Eddie, a snap German, <laughs> snap dragon suplex, thank you, uh, on the Eddie Dennis, Eddie Dennis rolls out of the ring, he immediately follows it up with a suicide dive, and then does another snap dragon uh, snoop suplex on the outside, that was a very great visual, I'm a, I'm a fan of suplexes, you know, like Germans, stuff like that. Regular suplexes, not so much, but, you know, like the Germans, the uh, Snapdragons, Half Nelson suplex, all that type of stuff. Love them. So that was definitely a, uh, a great thing to see. Um, again, I'm not familiar with Eddie Dennis, but he looked good in this match. Um, Trent Seven, you know, the bigger name. And I believe this match went the way that it should. Uh Towards the end of the match, um, Eddie Dennis tried to remove the turnbuckle pad. And, you know, the ref saw him. You know, he was like, yo, yo, chill the fuck out. You can't be doing that type of shit. So, um, whatever move that he, or whatever his plan was that was intentional, you know, didn't go out that way. But, uh, Trent Seven tried to go for a seven stars lariat. Uh, he missed and ran into the turnbuckle. You know, um, which pretty much messed up his uh, equilibrium. That, that pretty much turned the tide of the match. Uh, Eddie Dennis hits a uh, razor's edge to the outside and uh, follows it up with the uh, next stop driver and picks up the win. Again, I'm not really familiar with Eddie Dennis, but Trent Seven is a big name. And not just NXT UK, but just a big name in you know professional wrestling. And I think it was the right decision to have him put over Eddie Dennis. 
again, because he doesn't have the name that Trent Seven has, but now he has that momentum behind him. If NXT UK is going to continue to push him, he now has a viable win under his belt, and now he looks credible, and that comes off as a threat to, you know, the next person he might be in a feud with, or if he's still feuding with uh, uh, Trent Seven, so, you know. Um, that match, I gave, like, a B, a solid B. It was good for an opener. Um, the crowd was into it. Really not too crazy, but, you know, didn't really need to be. So it was good. Well, moving on to the next match. The next match on the card was the NXT UK Women's Championship being defended in a triple threat match. You have uh, NXT UK Women's Champion Kaylee Ray versus Tony Storm versus Piper Niven. Now, this match was fucking great. Um, kudos to all three women going out there, putting on a great match. Uh, some of the notes I have for this match, uh, you know, as soon as the match started, Kaylee, um, Tony Storm's on Kaylee Ray's ass. She's just like, look, you know, leading up to the match, she was just telling Piper Niven, you know, I need you to not, like, not get, be in this match, you know. Fall back. Let me handle this. Let me and Kaylee Ray handle this shit. And you just, you know, you just go sit down somewhere. And Piper Niven's like, fuck all that. Like, you talking crazy. So, anybody trying to hear all that, this is my spot. I earned this spot. And me and you might be cool, but it ain't going down like that. And that's pretty much how the match flowed on to pretty much throughout the whole match. Um, like, again, I said uh, Kaylee Ray started getting her ass kicked by Tony Storm as soon as the match started. And Piper Niven, you know, is trying to interject inside the match. But Tony Storm is pretty much just like, nah, 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 like, fall back, fall back. So, um, you know, but Piper Niven definitely showed up. She definitely uh, came with the fire for this match. You know, she's throwing sentons everywhere, cannonball sentons on uh, Kaylee Ray and Tony Storm. Um, Kaylee Ray at one point hits a super kick onto Piper Niven and it goes into a, um, a suplex, a German suplex from Tony Storm. That was a very dope spot. I like that. Um, as the match is going on, there's a standoff between Piper Niven and Tony Storm, you know. At this point, Tony Storm has a chair. Everybody's like, you know, is she going to attack Piper Niven with the chair? What's going on going on here? And Kaylee Ray is just like waiting for it to happen. But, ha, joke's on her because they both decide that they're going to fuck up Kaylee Ray, you know. So, um... As the match goes on, Kaylee Ray hits a gory bomb on Tony Storm. No, I'm sorry, hits a gory bomb on uh, Piper Niven, which I don't mean to come off like an asshole, but that was a, uh, definitely a feat of strength. Uh, very much so. But, you know, after that, Tony Storm breaks up the pin. Uh, another dope ass spot was Piper Niven hitting. A Canadian destroyer, or I'm sorry, they're not in Canada, so it's not a Canadian destroyer. Um, I guess a United Kingdom destroyer. <laughs> um, on to uh, Kaylee Ray. Uh, right after, Tony Storm hits the Storm Zero trying to steal the win. But Piper Niven, again, still showing like she's not going to just be pushed to the side in this match. Um, gets, you know, breaks up the pin. At this point, um, Tony Storm has the advantage, and she hits a uh, frog splash onto Piper Niven. But as soon as she lands the frog splash, Kaylee Ray comes over, hits her with a super kick, pins Piper Niven, and she retains the NXT UK Women's Championship. Uh, I give this match a B plus. Uh, it was a great showing from all three ladies involved. Um, I pretty, I'm sure I missed a lot of stuff, but you overall got the gist of it, you know. Two women that had respect for each other going into the match on on at, at odds end, um, they ended up coming to uh, I wouldn't call, say an agreement, but you know they pretty much make good terms, like end up on good terms as the match rolls on, and uh, I'm pretty sure that was one of the points that Kaylee Ray was counting on 
to backfire, you know, but it backfired on her, you know, she didn't expect these two to be like, all right, let's put our differences aside and just kick this bitch's ass, you know, so I gave the match, I gave it a solid B plus, all the women showed up and it was a very good match, moving on, now, this match right here was the match of the night, the fucking banger, it was it, man, this match was everything, Jordan Devlin, Versus Tyler Bate, um, both very, very amazing talents. Tyler Bate, you know, he's pretty much, I don't want to call him the Johnny Gargano of NXT UK TakeOvers because he's not Johnny Gargano, he's Tyler Bate. But he is the unsung hero of NXT UK TakeOvers, you know, he's yet to have a bad match at all. Um, these two guys show off, start the match off, you know, um, there was a lot of chain wrestling, chain and technical wrestling going on, I'm a huge mark, mark for that, uh, the UK style of the technicality of wrestling that was going on, um, you know, uh, a lot of high flying, a lot of power being shown, a lot of, uh, just a lot of great wrestling from two remarkable individuals, um, Again, these guys went out there and just showed the fuck out. I don't know what else to say. Like, I'm trying to put this match over so much. If you haven't seen this match, you need to see it. That definitely was the match of the night. Quite possibly uh, the match of the week as far as, you know, WWE matches are concerned. Um... There's a lot of move. There's a lot going on in this match, and I have a lot of notes far as what happened. But I'm not about to break down the match, you know, move by move, play by play, because there's no reason for that. I want you to go and see that. I know I, I know I do that a lot with a lot of matches, but for this match, I want you to go out and watch it, because me just running it down, saying, you know, what happened in the match, far as moves, isn't going to do it justice. Like this is how serious this. This match was fucking great. It was amazing. Um, ultimately, um, well, you know, I'll say a few spots. A few spots that I like. Um, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give you guys an easy out. I want you to go see this match. You know, I'll tell you the finish. <laughs> Tyler Blake, uh, Tyler Blake, Tyler Bate um, wins the match. He had a springboard satellite DDT. Uh, followed up with the Tyler Driver, 97, and then uh, a twisting corkscrew splash, pretty much like AJ Styles' uh, spiral tap that he used to do, and he gets the win. But again, you know, if any match on this card was a five, five-star match, i say this was it. Um, i definitely give this match an A+, plus because these guys went out there, showed that they can fucking be in the middle of the car and still st steal the show. And that's exactly what they did. They stole the show. That match was amazing. I can't praise it enough. So definitely, 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 if you have not seen this match yet, you need to watch that match. You know? Again, Jordan Devlin, um, I'm familiar with him from... Uh, the, uh, Jordan Devlin, I call him... Uh, what is it? Cousin Stanley... Um, was it Finn Balor's cousin Stanley? If Finn Balor's SpongeBob, Jordan Devlin is cousin Stanley. If you're familiar with SpongeBob, then you definitely get that reference because that's exactly how Jordan Devlin comes off. <laughs> but, you know, he showed up as well. Again, I've only seen so much from him, but what I've seen is great. He's a, he's a great heel, he knows how to be an asshole. And then you got him in there with, like, one of the top baby faces in NXT UK, Tyler Bate. So they both played off each other's personalities well, and then they both played off each other's abilities in the ring very well. So, again, this match was an A+. Plus, best match on the card. No debating. Don't let nobody else tell you anything different because they're fucking lying. Straight like that. You know, again, this match was super dope. Five, four, three, two, all right.
The next match on the card was the NXT UK Tag Team Titles in a Fatal 4-Way Ladder Match. We had NXT UK Tag Team Champions Gallus, the team of Mark Coffey and uh, Wolfgang versus Flash Morgan Webster and, and Mark Andrews versus Imperium, the team of Fabian Eichner and Martel Barthel and the Grizzled Young Vets, uh, Zach Gibson and uh, James Drake. Now, again, there's I have notes for this match as well, but it was a fucking ladder match. So what was the point of making notes? <laughs> there's no point of making notes for this match because it was just straight mayhem, you know. It was a ladder match that pretty much broke down into an unofficial TLC match, you know. They interjected tables and chairs, you know. At one point, Mark Andrews even brings out a kendo stick, and he's beating the shit out of Zach Gibson and uh, James Drake. To the point where the, the, the fucking kendo stick broke, because he was beating them so fucking bad with it, you know. But again, this match had a lot of innovative tag team offense. I've yet to see a uh, ladder match in WWE where guys use like the the ladders themselves and you know each other to this degree like there's been a lot of ladder matches in um, uh, WWE you know specifically we'll just you know I'll stick to the U the NXT um, brand but these guys all, all of these guys, all 16 of these, no, I'm sorry, 16, I can't count, all eight of these guys, yeah, edit out that 16, all eight of these guys, yeah, edit this part out, now you can keep going with this, all eight of these guys were so innovative in this match, just the way that they used the ladders and the tag team offense that it was, it was just extremely I don't know, with like I, I'm getting some kind of like kind of flabbergasted on how to explain it because if you're familiar with tag team wrestling in WWE, you don't get this type of reaction from it. You get it like you know, NXT has great tag team wrestling, but you know you don't really get to see it far as 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 much as you would like to, you know, like there might be one or two tag team matches that, um, that'll happen a week on, you know, when that was two, two tag matches out of, you know, a two hour show, but this, uh, this match was phenomenal, like I can't praise this match enough, uh, again, the, there was a lot of high flying, a lot of, you know, the hardcore aspect, and the match was great. Again, it was a ladder match, but they brought out tables and chairs. Um, just a lot of dope, crazy spots. But that's what you expect. That's what you would expect from this type of gimmick match. You know, I'm not going out there. I'm not expecting these guys to be doing fucking rest holds and uh, technical, technical wrestling, chain grappling, and shit like that. No. They went out there and had a fucking spot fest because that's exactly what this match was supposed to be. A fucking spot fest. And those spots and that mayhem and carnage that took place in this match made sense, you know. There was one spot where um, Fabian Eichner hits his patented um, springboard moonsault onto Flash Morgan Webster while he's laid out on the, uh, on the ladder, you know. Um, guys just, oh, I'm sorry. And also, uh, Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews they do a double tandem flipping senton uh, on this. I forgot who it was, but, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was on the Wolfgang, I believe. Because they try to put joke Mark Coffey on a, uh, a table. And him, him just laying on a table. The shit broke. They didn't even do nothing to him. It just broke while he was laying on the table. Um, again, a lot of innovative tag team offense took place in this match. If there was... One match that you were supposed to see, it was Jordan Devlin versus Tyler Bate. If there were two matches you were supposed to see, it was that last match I just mentioned and this ladder match. Again, if you're going into this 
gonna say, oh, these guys are just doing all this crazy shit, and you know, where's the psychology? And there was definitely psychology in this match, so don't let nobody tell you that shit. But also, it's a fucking ladder match. Pretty much hardcore, there's no rules. So why are you expecting them to be, like, doing all this technical shit? Don't expect that. You shouldn't be expecting that at all. So, the match breaks down the ending sequence of this match. Um, we had, um, sorry. It was pretty much down to Imperium and uh, Gallus. Yeah. So, as... Fabian Eichner say kind of pretty much saved Martel Barthel from being knocked off the ladder. Uh, they were going to try to go for a European bomb. It didn't work out that way. So, um, yeah, that's the misses. Yeah, threw off my concentration. Anywho, so as the match is, the end of the match is breaking down, fucking Wolfgang comes out of nowhere. Hits a spear on a Fabian Eichner. He gets fucking knocked into a, a ladder. Ladder breaks in half. That shit, I marked out for that shit. And then, uh, Mark Coffey knocks Martel Barthel off of the ladder, you know, onto the ropes, and he falls out of the ring and falls on a bunch of, of the other competitors that were in the match. They, uh, Gallus. Goes up, gets the titles, and retained again. I give this match, I give it a, mm, I'll give it an A minus. Again, I'm a mark for spots and unconventional fucking just mayhem tag team wrestling. Again, I'm a big enthusiast of tag team wrestling. I love tag team wrestling. I don't get this type of reaction for main roster wrestling. So, I come to the, the, the NXT brand, and NXT UK just delivered the way that I can respect and appreciate. So, again, I give this match like an A-. It was very good. Okay, now moving on to the main event. The main event was Joe Coffey facing NXT UK champion Walter. Um, this match turned out a little bit better than I was expecting, to be honest. Um, Joe Coffey had a great showing. Um, if you know Walter, he is a monster. Towers over Joe Coffey. But Joe Coffey showed up in this match. Um, again, I'm not too familiar with Joe Coffey. So I'm just going off of looks again. I know I am familiar with Walter, and I know what he does. So I kind of was expecting him to go out there and dominate the match from start to finish. And that's definitely not what happened. Joe Coffey was kicking Walter's ass like he was Walter's size. Like, he showed up. He's definitely a power. Um, definitely had a lot of power to his game. Definitely had a lot of uh Got a lot of offense in, so it wasn't a one-sided match. He pretty much looked like he could. He was Walter's e uh, equal, and I commend whoever booked this match, um, or whoever uh, I forgot. I can't think of the term, but produce. Yeah, whoever produced this match did both of these men great favors because they both came out looking great. More so for Joe Coffey because again. If you just seen the size of the the size difference in the two, you'd expect Walter to just take off on him, and that didn't happen. You know, there was one point in the match where Joe Coffey tried to get into a chop battle with Walter, and if you know Walter, you know you are not trying to get into a chop battle with him because Joe Coffey immediately lost that shit. You immediately lost that shit. You know, if it started. At 1.1 seconds, he lost that shit by 1.5. It was just that quick. But uh, during the match, there was, you know, there was some uh, controversy going on. Uh, at one point, uh, Walter tries to go for a running drop kick onto Joe Coffey. He misses, 
but ends up hitting the referee, knocks the referee out. Um, as the referee is out, out comes Alexander Wolf, a uh, member of Imperium. You know, he comes out to help uh, Walter. So he comes out, he attacks Joe Coffey. Uh, out comes Ilya Dragunov, um, another familiar, um, a name I'm familiar with. Don't know too much, but I am familiar with him in, the, in some of his work. So he comes out, you know, he takes out Alexander Wolf. Uh, after a while, Walter takes him out. And the match continues on. Um, before we get into Walter taking Alexander Wolf out, um, Ilya Dragunov, it, I'm sorry, Alexander, not Alexander Wolf. Before we talk about Walter taking out Ilya Dragunov, um, Ilya Dragunov hits a running European uppercut onto uh, Alexander Wolf, who then collides into Joe Coffey's uh, left leg. Now, that goes on to the match. That goes on and plays uh, how the match ends out. But, you know, that was a crucial, another crucial turning point in the match where um, up until that point, Joe Coffey really had a, um, a strong showing. So then after that, he had to really pretty much fight, fight back, you know, fight upward, so to speak. So, um, the ending sequence, Walter hits a power bomb, he hits a chop, he hits another power bomb, and then he gets into like a sleeper hold, um, sleeper hold slash cross face type of maneuver where Joe Coffey, uh, taps out. Um, I give this match a B plus, uh, but it wasn't bad, um, it, you know, that, that's just the feeling I have, it was like a B plus type of match, it was it was solid, very solid, and very good. So I give them a B plus for this match. Um, after the match, um, his fellow Imperium stable mates come out: Alexander Wolf, Fabian Eichner, Martel Bartel, and they, you know they stand in the ring triumphant. But the show's not over there because, as you know, leading up to next week's um, January twenty fifth, the weekend of. Uh, the Royal Rumble, there's the World's Collide event going on between NXT and NXT UK brands, um, match card, a bunch of matches, a bunch of dope matches that are on this card, it's super stacked, but the main um, build that's been going on is Imperium versus the Undisputed Era, and as soon as this match is over, you guessed it, out comes Undisputed Era, Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and uh, Roderick Strong. They come out and attack uh, Imperium. You know, three of the members who had just had brutal encounters earlier in the night. And they just, the pack mentality takes over. They just attack them like a pack of wolves, you know, targeting uh, all the... Uh, all the injuries and they just pretty much they just stomp the niggas out straight like that they kick their ass so you know that the close to the show was uh undisputed era standing tall which is pretty funny because it was a whole nxt uk show and you would think that more nxt uk guys would come out to help you know their brand while the while the, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for. While the other brand comes on and pretty much disrespects them. So, but again, that was a great way to end the show to build the hype for this upcoming event, Worlds Collide. Overall, the NXT UK Takeover Blackpool 2 was a very good show. Um, I give it an A overall. I know some of the matches, you know, don't add up with that overall show grade, but it was a good show from top to finish, um, again, you should go out of your way to see Tyler Bate versus Jordan Devlin, and the Fatal 4-Way ladder match, those are definitely two of the best matches on the card, um, the first being Tyler Bate versus Jordan Devlin, and then the ladder match, uh, coming in close second, um, uh, again, five matches on the card, and they all delivered for what they were and who they were 
involved in the match. You know, again, the opener was just that solid for an opener. The triple threat for the NXT UK Women's Championship, another solid match. Great showing from all the ladies in there. Again, Jordan Devlin versus Tyler Bate. Best match, best match, best match of the night on the card. Um, again, the, the latter match slightly following that, and then the main event with the main event payoff. You know, Joe Coffey didn't go out there looking like no bitch, and while you know Walter won, then you have NXT's Undisputed Era coming out, building to the next event, what was Collide. So. Overall, the the show is booked great. Um, all the angles paid off, and we will see future angles being paid off. Um, we might even see something come up with this next week's episode of NXT. So you never know. But this was my review for NXT UK's Takeover Blackpool Two. Leave your uh, drop a like on the video. Leave your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to the channel. And uh, I will be back for the next NXT UK special because I don't really watch it. We don't do the weekly one. I don't watch it weekly, you know. Sue me. But this was Ness XT, a special edition of Ness XT, and we'll see you for the next edition of Ness XT with our regularly scheduled weekly programming. So, boom.